Hello, everyone. Welcome to our RBA Talk 202L. And I am Diana, our RBA committee member of Hong Kong chapter. So let me uh, say thank you very much to Detour this year for inviting us and create such a lovely platform to our speakers to debate about whether design is less is more or less is a bore. And also, I would like to start off with a bit of introduction of our RBA Hong Kong chapter. So we have 900 members in Hong Kong at the moment, and we aim to promote architecture not only to architects, designers, and every one of you. And in this few years, our key events are Eat, Shop, Talk, and Celebrate. And this year, our two key events are the design competitions and also open house. So we did uh, such a lovely uh, walking tour with K11 and New World. Uh, so if you want to know more about the walking tour, please visit our RIBA Hong Kong Chapter Facebook website. Okay, let me come back to our topic. Today's debate topic is less is a bore. So we have two teams here. May I introduce those? Our moderator, Peter. Peter Fetro. He is the Associate Professor and Director of the Master of Architecture Program at CUHK. And then we have two teams here. Our proposition team is supporting less is a bore. We have our first speakers, Benny Lee. He's an architect and also director of Brett Studio. And we have our second speaker, Polly Ho. She is fashion designer and also founder of Loop Loop. And our first speaker, Louise Brown. She's architect and also principal of Grimshaw. And then here come to our opposition team. We have three gentlemen here. First speaker is Keith Chan. He is interior designer and furniture designer and founder of Hintigo. And we have our second speaker, Kevin Lam. He's our branding specialist, head of branding communications of Ronald Liu and Partners. And last but not least, our first speaker is Jason Tang. He's architect and also founder of New Studio. Okay, I'm sure you all get very excited now. Let me pass over to Peter. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for inviting me to moderate um, this discussion. Uh, we're going to um, discuss uh, two slogans, less is more and less is bore. And I think one of them, the less is bore, is a reaction to the slogan less is more. But today we're going to kick off with that one. And I've drawn this sketch as a kind of a starting point. It's supposed to be, it's not very clear, but it's supposed to be a picture of, a, of an iceberg. And I think if we think of uh, the discussion today in terms of oppositions, from the less is more, you've got this camp, which is kind of being with us ever since we started uh, studying architecture, which is modern and minimal. And if you look at the other side, you've got the postmodern and the kind of hybrid. But what interests me is, as we go through the speakers today, is to get a deeper discussion and understanding of what these two slogans mean, and eventually taking it to places that maybe interrogate the very notion of what we're trying to discuss. And finally, what's important for me is if you think of these two words, more and bore, and place them in the context of Hong Kong. And I think it, it would be interesting for all our speakers to reflect on this. In, you know, I don't know a city where there could be you know, more, more, or more bore. So this is kind of the point of discussion for today. So thank you very much, and I'll pass on to the first speaker, um, Benny. Benny, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm Benny um, from um, Brad Studio. Today, I'm going to take you through why we believe less is a bore. Less really is a bore. As a student, uh, when I was a student, I really like less is a bore. Le less is more as a statement because it is uh, an excuse for my laziness, supported by a legendary master architect, Mies van der Rohe, um, to explain why I'm doing less. Um, here on the screen, I have uh, my creation last night, uh, which took me five seconds. It's uh, absolute digital emptiness. It's a painting called Untitled. Well, do you feel more? Um, would you buy it uh, um, if I sell it to you? And if I push less 
to an extreme, to the least, do we get the most of it? Um, Mies, who said less is more, he said less, but apparently he did more. Um, on the screen here, um, we have uh, an art installation in one of the most um, famous uh, buildings by Mies, the Barcelona Pavilion. On the right-hand side, there is an art uh, installation by Anna and Eugene Bach, which cover up the entire um, Barcelona Pavilion with white film to um, take away all the materiality um, from Barcelona Pavilion. And um, by contrast, you will see Mies actually did more than he says. His action is louder than his speech. All the uh, orange marble, the green marble, um, white sandstone floor, um, the great tinted glass, the stainless steel uh, silver mullions, and also the sculpture Elba uh, by George Colby. As you can see, by comparison to the right image, he has done apparently more than he says. And another, another phase um, that goes with less is more is form follow function. May I ask exactly what is the function of the Barcelona Pavilion? Well, the function here is apparently uh, largely variable. Um, although I, don't, I do not dispute how beautiful the space and the proportion of the space is, but who is there to define the volume of the reflected pool? Who is there to define the proportion of the space? To say form follow function is almost uh, uh, quite a self-fulfilling catch line because function is not absolute and there is a lot of space you can maneuver uh, uh, within the function. And in my, in, in my role as a design tutor, I can see less is more uh, uh, form follow function. These catchphrase has a very adverse impact to students because it misguided them to believe that there can only be one solution to design. Well, the student can say, okay, form has to follow function, right? The function is, is, is there, so I just follow it with my form, job done. Apparently, it doesn't end well for most of the students. As a designer, it's our nature to challenge the brief and its function and to see if there is a workaround uh, to enhance the operation of the function and to through the creative process uh, to make the most of the design. Well, less is more, the minimalist works, gained value by contrast. Our mother nature and the main landscape is mostly ornamental. As you can see, um, the two examples I brought to you here is the Asuma House by Tadao Ando. In the very traditional streetscape of a residential district in Japan, this monolithic grey box apparently outstands itself. And on the right side, you can see the recently myst uh, 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 discovered mysterious sculpture by, I don't know who it is, uh, in Utah. The Mother Nature is so ornamented and the monolith sculpture outstands itself. However, that also means if you start to just position two minimalist works together, it starts to lose its power and curiosity. And imagine if the entire world is based on minimalism. It is rather deadly and boring. Um, imagine if you walk down the street and the district that you have is all monolithic, simple, plain, rectangular box. It would be rather uninteresting and depressing. Um, in the following uh, few examples of Brett Studio's work, I want to show you uh, uh, why we don't believe less is more and how we avoid ourselves to being boring. Uh, this is a project uh, uh, we did together with um, RHSD and um, Environmental Protection Department. It's a community green station in Wan Chai, opposite to SPCA. It's a recycle uh, facility. Um, as you can see in this project, we rearranged the function ourselves. Um, the left side is the blue block, the office, and the right side is um, a, a workshop where we put the bailing machine, a tall, a very tall machinery for the recycling facilities. We rearranged all the functions on three perimeters of, of the site to open up the bottom um, to the pedestrian footpath, which will lead from the one tree district to the promenade. So as you can see, function is not uh, 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 very uh, rigid. We rearrange it. It's our task to rearrange it. And if we believe in less is more and 
follow and uh, form follow function, we could have stopped here, which is amazing. It follows the function and it works. But apparently we didn't. Uh, we overlay all the different requirements, statutory and the user requirements, to turn into a beautiful design such as this. You can see the trellis is uh, 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 alternate rotating trellis, and it's not a timber, it's, it's, it's a GLP. Uh, uh, it looks like timber, but it's a, a GLP uh, product, the trellis. And on the eye level, we, all, we have a different permeability, so we can see through to the courtyard from the office. And apparently, we're trying our best to make this project not a boring product, but a very interesting one. The next point I want to say is color. Well, the minimalists, when we say less is more, they always use monochrome, black and white and gray. But it's just incompatible with our nature um, and our culture as well. This is a project we did for the Chinese New Year Fair in Victoria Park. And you can see the, the concept is the, wish, uh, the wishing tree in Taipo. We, we throw our uh, red pockets with our wishes to the tree. And apparently, if this project is done in black and white, we won't, we, we, we won't be accepted because Chinese year is about uh, a very uh, happy atmosphere. So on and so forth. And lastly, this is a, a, a project in Kwai Chung, called Kwai Chung Crematorium. Um, through the curved roof, we um, framed a, a very ceremonial space. The function itself is very simple, a ceremonial space. It can be a rectangular box. But we try to make a very peaceful moment and uh, for, 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 for the families to uh, remember their deceased. So do you think less is more, or do you think more is less? In Brad Studio, in my work, we intend to make this statement more straightforward. Less is less, more is more. Thank you very much. Um, hello, this is Keith from Integral, uh, a design interior space for residential projects and a uh, lot of furniture. And less is more to me is kind of a progress of a um, mindfulness practice. Um, when I was studying interior design in, in Hong Kong, everyone knows, as you guys mentioned, Ms. Van der Rohe, um, less is more is just, to me, was a slogan. Someone in the 1910s said, less is more, and then that is an architecture giant, and I would say, wow, this is my idol. I have to follow it. Um, less is more is something cool. Uh, it's something that students have to uh, copy. That's it. At, at that stage, when I was not mature, that is only the, the something I want to pretend or, or, or imitate. But when I start working, uh, I designed uh, for my boss, and his big idol was John Parson, who uh, designed uh, a lot of minimalism um, shops and residential houses all around the world. And at that time, my boss taught me a lot of detail in the interior design in terms of lighting, material, uh, details. Just like in the slide, you see the handle, recess handle with the recess light trough. A lot of uh, functionality in the space, but if we have to hide it, we have to do a lot of lot more detail to hide everything. Um, so at that time, when I was 20-something, I thought, oh, that less is more. More means that we have to do more in, in terms of, in order to uh, make it look less. But then when I was 30-something, when I start my uh, own business, I started to have a lot of Japanese clients in Hong Kong. And they introduced me this guy, San Lee Kyu, uh, in Japan long, long, long time ago. He's a tea master who invented um, the tea ceremony in, in Japan to serve the king or serve the people from England, from, from France, to like a welcoming ceremony to, to the VIPs. And this guy uh, was not only the one who made teas, but he only also designed uh, the tea bowl uh, the, all the tools for the, uh, for the 
tea ceremony, who said wabi sabi. Wabi sabi means we have to respect the nature. The nature gives you what, then we receive what.、Uh, we don't add any unnecessary things to to the tools or to the space. He also designed the tea room like this. As you can see on the right hand side, the the door of the tea room is very small. That means you have to bow.、Uh, even you are the king or you are the owner of the castle, you have to bow because you have to bow to the、uh, to the nature because the god、uh, that they believe in the Buddhism. The Buddhist gave you、uh, the nature, and the nature gives you everything. And even you are the king, you have to put down your sword. You cannot bring any weapons into the tea ceremony because you have to put down your ego, put down your arrogant、uh, character. That everyone inside the tea room is equal. And on the left hand side, you can see there's a、uh, wall which is totally empty, only with the wood structure and the Japanese plastering because they want to give you the space to put the、uh, painting. Uh, by season or by the、um, the mood of the tea ceremony,、uh, the the people who join the tea ceremony. So in the summer or in the winter, they can change the painting. In this case, if we already have decorate everything in inside the room, you have no more space to put、uh, the or to change the the art or、um, something that you want to ex express by the season or by your mood. So, this is one of my Japanese clients in Hong Kong.、Um, you see, they have a lot of、uh, antique furniture from Japan and China, because they,、uh, my client, is a mix of the Japanese and Chinese who was born in America. And this is Hong Kong, so she always want me to design something with the mixed culture、uh, of. Because of the the grandparents、uh, who live in Japan, they so they have given them a, a, some two hundred years old、uh, antique furniture, and my clients want their son and daughter, who is、uh, born in Hong Kong, that they want to learn、um, the culture and history and heritage from their grandparents. So they want me to put the furniture in the middle of the living room, but at the same time. They can change because they have thousand,、uh, thousands of pieces, of art pieces, of furniture in in the warehouse. So I designed this、uh, very simple wood, copper, and the tile and the marble stone in the foyer area to let them to、uh, to put or change、uh, the furniture and the art piece time by time. And this is like a museum, is like a gallery to remind their grand、uh, the grandchildren that my. Grandparents is from Japan,、um, so to me, less is more because it gives you more space to contain your your、um, content,、uh, the con content in your mind, and not not always want to be、uh, very、um, colorful or everything has everywhere has a different material because we want to give you the space to 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 put more. In your mind, and this is the、uh, the same apartment.、Uh, you see, my four staffs are very happy.、Uh, I would say this layout of the space、uh, gives you less、uh, boundary、uh, between the kitchen and the living room and the start dining room, and the material is very simple and natural.、Uh, people here only enjoy the laughter, only enjoy the food.、Uh, it won't. Distract you to to see the material or see decoration, and one of the uh, um, uh, my my client said once,、uh, which is very、uh, impressive, that because she has a lot of home、uh, houses in around the world, I asked her, where is your home? She said, the place where my mom is, that's my home. So to me, I design a lot of residential project, but. The meaning of the house, the meaning of the home, is only about your family. It's not only about the marble, only、uh, not only about、uh, the material or the decoration that you used. And when I designed the Hong Kong shop of the Fritz Sanson,、um, 
I use the same principle. Even if it's not Japan, it is from Denmark. But I know Arnie Jacobson, Paul Keel, whom those kind of giants are very, very important in the design history. So I didn't design anything to distract that because their masterpiece, the furniture itself, is the main character. So I only put the wood flooring and uh, Danish kind of molding on the wall. And all the thing is white and only wood. And you see, I also put some um, panels uh, behind the, the furniture to have the very, very little slogan on it. That is the uh, slogan, not the slogan, but the, something that the Anya Kamsan spoke to give a, a feeling of a, like a museum of Anya Kamsan. And I also designed a, a cafe in Central. Uh, the kind brief was very simple. Uh, the morning is the coffee shop, but at night is a bar. So uh, I want to have a sharp cut, uh, like a horizontal line to cut it into uh, two half. One is a very humble, very natural material from Japan. It's a plastering, all white. But at night, it is all copper because I want it to be very glamorous. I think. Uh, only two material give you a very, very uh, big contrast to the uh, to the space of the the usage of the space, and give you all the imagination uh, to the customer uh, to use the space to chat, to drink, to everything. And um, if we have a lot of material or decoration, I think uh, people here will not be able to. Uh, feel the space or feel the food or feel the, feel the um, chatting uh, or the, the drinks. So to me, less is definitely more because we contain more in, my, in our mind. Hi, everyone. This is Polly. I'm from the fashion world. Compared to Benny and uh, Keith, like they're the architecture and interior designer. So I'm very happy uh, to be here today. So let me share with all, all of you uh, my point of view of uh, Les is a ball. Les is a ball. Um, based on different religion and culture, we have different view of aesthetics. That I think and. Um, more is, is not easy. You have to put loads of efforts and, you know, energy, energy, energy. That is more for me. Uh, in the fashion world, uh, we have a very famous fashion icon, uh, Irish. She always um, wear very uh, fashionable and very bold, loud, and always make a statement when she go out. So, um, that's her slogan. And... Um, and um, the, the key, the, the key more is more and less is a ball. So you can see her style like that. Uh, in, in the 70s, we have a very famous designer, Vivian Westwood. Uh, she played more modern punk and uh, new wave uh, fashions. Uh, you can see there's loads of layering and she always got inspiration from the old days and to make new style. Um, you can see Jit Sanda is more minimalism at that time uh, on, 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 on 90s. So um, that's the comparison of uh, minimalism and uh, maximalism. And also Kelvin Kine, Helmut Land, and Jit Sanda is more uh, minimalism uh, at that period and their uh, upcoming uh, designer at that time also. Uh, for Versace, you can see uh, on the right-hand side the, the brand, they, uh, she always pay uh, with uh, history. And um, you can uh, uh, pay a lot of uh, Italian history, like uh, her signature Medusa, uh, Medusa icon from the, uh, from the Greek uh, legend. And also uh, Helmut Lane, uh, you can see he pay around, uh, she pay around loads of black and white and a uh, very, very sim simple um, silhouette. But uh, compared to John Galliano, you can, you, can, you can tell they pay more structure, loads of things is going on, very busy. 
So uh, now, uh, in, uh, from, from now, I'm talking about more myself uh, compared to Muji. Muji, of course, is very minimalism, the style. Um, for, for me, uh, my brand is called Loom Loop. Uh, I always, uh, we always preserve our own culture and uh, to preserve culture and craftsmanship uh, as the details. You can see um, the right hand side, I pay a lot of the Chinese note. Um, on the details and the prints. Actually, this collection is uh, inspired by, by uh, who, uh, Hao Pao Mansion. Um, that's the, the old days in, 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 in Hong Kong, the, the building. Uh, to use the Chinese knot, why, why I, I, I make my brand and use the Chinese knot? Because uh, th this lovely Chinese knot is my grandmom taught me how to make it. And one day I asked my mom, um, can you remind me how to make it? And uh, of course she doesn't know how to make the, the, uh, the traditional, the uh, Chinese knot, even uh, the traditional food, she doesn't know. So I really want to make something like from the old days, like my, my grandmom taught me and I want to preserve it. So uh, I used 2,000 uh, Chinese knot to make, uh, to make a dress uh, and apply some award, uh, award to, to, to share, to, share uh, to people that, the story behind. And uh, you can see those are an other color combo of the 2,000 Chinese knot. And uh, sometimes I put some details um, uh, as, as the details for the Chinese knot. And uh, not only the Chinese not um, details, but uh, for for the fabric for the fabrication, I because of this fabric, I quit my job to start the brand. It's called the Canton Silk. If you guys are interested, you can check uh, on YouTube. Uh, you you type Loom Loop and Canton Silk, you will know the process how to make the Canton Silk. This is um, three thousand uh, years history. Um, the, the, the technique, how to make it. It's all natural dye and, uh, and dye by yam. And um, that's, that's something I really want to preserve it and uh, use it every season and tell, tell, tell uh, my, my, my audience. Um, so that, that is the mood board for, um, for every time when, when I start the season. I will make the mood board. Uh, as I mentioned, I use uh, Hao Pao Maison this time to um, as my inspiration for, for the collection. So, uh, yeah, more is more. I use print on print and um, also the Canton seal and the Chinese knot um, details to make uh, my collection. So uh, I do the shooting in, uh, in uh, Hao Pao Maison and also inspire, uh, the collection inspired by the uh, Hao Pao Maison. So you can see the, uh, the, Chinese, um, the Chinese cloud and also the color, I, uh, the colorway. I use uh, the Hao Pao Maison um, colorway to do that. So here is the collection. And uh, I have uh, two dresses, like a, a traditional transom dresses, use the Canton silk and some of uh, my leftover uh, printer fabric to make a very, very long uh, transom and make the inst uh, installation in Hao Pao. If you guys have time, can pop by and visit. So to be conclude, as a more is more designer, we don't intend to repeat history, but we use historical treasure to create new trend, new style, new taste, new resolution in a contemporary aesthetic way. That's, that's it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kevin. Um, let me start. Uh, I'm from Less is More team. So, but before that, before I going to draw that definition of what is less and more, may may I introduce a bit myself because um, my background is really different with all the speakers. They are architecture, design, interior designer, uh, fashion designer. I'm nothing about designer, and. Um, I'm a former journalist turned to branding, PR, and communication specialist. So uh, a little bit about creative is about the content. For me, my job is to create content. Uh, no matter tagline, press release, uh, article, and such and such. So what, 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 what's that? So uh, what is my perspective of less is more? Let me show you a, 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 a tagline, sort of from a very famous American uh, 
writer Mark Twain. You can you you can tell from this sentence. If I had more time, I can write less, not more. Why? Because for a content creator, it's always very difficult to summarize in a sentence, but a lot of information. But it's easy to put a lot of information into an article. Two pages, three pages is easy. But to summarize into one pager is always our uh, challenge. And from a very famous uh, media platform, uh, Business Insider, a good slogan is brief yet memorable. Why I, I'm talking about tagline? Because slogan or slogan? Because for, for my job, for a branding specialist, the most challenging thing is to write a slogan. So I ask you, what is your, uh, uh, what is your, in your mind now? What was the best slogan or tagline you remember? One of my, my, my choice is just do it, just three words. Uh, this slogan created like a few decades ago, but still using at this moment. And I, I believe all the audience on the stage or at your home, you remember just do it. And just uh, advertising for my company, my, our tagline is design better life. It's easy to remember three words. And I think um, and, and other challenging for my branding uh, uh, professional is naming. Uh, in particular, translating from English to Chinese. I think uh, most of the Chinese speakers can remember the Coca-Cola's Chinese name rather than maybe rather than the English name because it's too perfect. Just four words. Uh, the pronunciations, the meaning is so fruitful, but just four words. And one of my choice of the best advertisement is from Apple. Less is more is their, their own slogan for this advertisement and not showing all the aspect of the uh, uh, notebook or uh, laptop is just a line and just a slogan. That's it. You will remember it forever. And, and just show some, some trends about communications. So um, it's not about good and bad, but it's the facts. We need to um, understand the audience. In before, uh, they have a longer memory, sort of, but now they have nine seconds to stay on your content, on social media in particular. As mentioned, spend 2.5 seconds on any piece of content on social media platform in particular. And now we are all using mobile. I think most of us are spending less time on one content. Now it's just 1.7 seconds. It's crazy. So, but it's interesting that we, we all know that at, and now we have so many platforms and, and Facebook, and Instagram, Twitter, etc., etc. But we try to make it more simple. Just a QR code, or you subscribe a content, you just can log in by Facebook, Google, etc., etc. It's about my company as well. Can you remember it? But if I just highlight some of the keywords, or even this, design and sustainability, you will remember forever. Interpreting it to our pictures, so we, our projects want to highlight our sustainability and also uh, the design sense. So you can tell from this project of uh, uh, what, uh, what winning projects integral in Guilin, and also CG Center, I, I think very famous. And draw to a sort of uh, my conclusion of creativity is from complexity to simplicity. So uh, English very famous uh, and another amazing writer, Oscar Wilde. If I have more, I, have, I need to spend more time on putting things into an article, but I spend more time on taking it out. And everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. So this is sort of my, um, my, my, my thought about less is more. I think for creative, uh, for my point of view about story, about content, it's about new story begins. It's to create more space for everyone, for more engaging the audience to interact and imagination. Create more space for imagination and interaction is what I believe about less is more, and less is more is more important. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everyone, my name is Louise Brown. I'm principal at Grimshaw Architects. Um, so I'm going to talk today um, a little bit, um, um, taking, my, taking my inspiration from a quote from Venturi, Robert Venturi, who wrote the book Less is a Bore. So the book Less is a Bore, for those non-architects in the audience, was really the foundations for postmodernism um, in architecture. So what I'm going to talk about today is not about celebrating necessarily postmodernism, which most people would consider almost kitsch or pastiche in this day and age, but taking these words of Venturi and applying them to the contemporary um, world of cities, architecture, and culture. So taking these words, a sensibility that values complexity over simplicity, decoration over minimalism, color over the monochrome, fragmentation over singularity, contingency over universality, context over introspection, doubt over certainty, and in which more will always be more. So taking the first phrase, complexity over simplicity, often in modernist and minimalist architecture, um, things really appear super simple. But in order to make something appear unbelievably simple, there's all, often a, it's often hiding a multitude. So we know as architects, or anyone who's practicing architecture, um, to, create, to make something seem really simple is often very, very difficult. So this image here is actually like an x-ray of all the building services in a building. The building services are like the, the life system of a building, the vascular system in a building. And often in the architecture that we do at Grimshaw is we celebrate this complexity in a way. These two images are images of two learning environments that we've recently designed. Um, the idea here is to celebrate the structure, the services, um, the visibility and transparency, the layering of um, the different spaces in the building. So everything's on display. So the students in the building can actually see how the building operates as a, as a living machine. Decoration over minimalism. As you can see, the image on the left, it's very faded and white. Almost, I don't know anybody who lives in a space like that or could continue to live in a space like that for very long. Um, as in modern society, we have an innate desire for um, materials, uh, culture, objects and things that reflect our culture and, and personal taste and style. A great um, example of, of this is the Eames House, although the house itself is quite restrained in its, um, in its architecture. And what it is is an aperture for a collection of all the wonderful things they, they had collected through their adventures through life in different um, countries um, all over the world. We live our lives in Technicolor, um, so color over the monochrome. Um, color is, um, is what human beings use as survival. It teaches us in the wild um, da about danger. It, um, it, it, is, it also can um, invoke emotion in, our, in us just through seeing colors. Um, these are some fantastic old photographs of Hong Kong, which you've probably seen um, lately. It's Hong Kong in colour, and the difference between the black and white photograph and the colour photograph is all about the layering and the life of the city. It's quite incredible, really. And especially in this one in particular, um, the people here really make, the, the, the colourful um, people here really make the scene. Fragmentation over singularity. So um, the way cities grow organically, this image is a great I image of, of that kind of organic growth or the kind of free freedom in which people um, live their lives. However, often when we, um, when we try to uh, create new urban centers, um, people are vertically stacked in apartment buildings um, and it creates a kind of a monotonous uh, cityscape. However, this is a great example in Angola. Um, it's a, a stacked apartment building, but the, the building is almost fragmented and it's each block or unit of the building really starts to show the people's lives that live within it. And of course, um, Andreas Gursky was obsessed with this idea of the um, image of the multiple, this idea of the image of the collective, and always that kind of uh, the tension between um, fragmentation and singularity. Contingency over universality. Um, this example I'm going to use again is um, a building that Nicholas Grimshaw designed in the 70s. It's the um, Herman Miller factory. And this building was built from the very beginning to be, um, to be adapted over time. Nicholas Grimshaw himself said that, in fact, I would like to see this building in the future be um, adapted into, into an office building. And I've designed it, uh, designed it so. And actually, recently, we were commissioned to um, convert the building into Bath School of Art and Design. So it was almost um, it was an incredible journey for this building and, and our firm. So here's an image of um, Nicholas Grimshaw and the team looking at the building just before it was um, not uh, decommissioned as a, a factory. And this is it today as a School of Art, art and Design. 
And the way it was designed, it built in the contingency to be adapted over time. Um, and it is the ultimate long life, life loose fit um, building. And it's the way we need to be building buildings of the future in terms of sustainability. Context over introspection. And this is another, and this brings me um, further into the, the discussion on sustainability. Um, in the, this modern age with the climate crisis, we need to always be build, thinking about buildings within their context. The example here I'm showing is the British Pavilion in Expo 1992, and it was a building all about context. It was a building built in Seville with the harsh sun. Um, however, it used its, its local environment, the, the sun, to generate energy, which the energy then powered the water wall on the building, which um, in turn cooled the building. A modern day adaptation of that is um, uh, Grimshaw's uh, sustainability, sustainability Pavilion in Dubai for the Expo this year, which will be likely next year at this stage. Um, but again, it's um, an idea of it's a net carbon zero building in the middle of the desert. It's all about context. It, is, it produces all of its own energy, harvests water, even in the harshest desert um, conditions. And the next, um, the next quote, Doubt over certainty is particularly apt in the post-COVID world. When we start to think about our learning environments and workplaces of the future, um, we need to think of solutions that will open up opportunities for innovation and not lock them down. So what we often do in our buildings is this kit of parts approach, where um, we create a kind of a, a, a series of modules and furniture items, and the building itself becomes a kind of aperture. And over time, the building then um, can, be, can be adapted um, to suit the different needs of the users of its time. So not necessarily flexible, it's um, as in a sort of a blank box that's, that's meant to do everything. It's actually what we call, um, it's adaptable and it kind of evolve over time. So the question to you and the audience is, um, how do you see the post-COVID world? Do you look at the, uh, the words on the left-hand column and you know, identify with them or the words on the right? Um, for me, the post-COVID world is full of doubt and uncertainty, that's for sure. But also when we come out of this, I see a celebration of human life. Um, I see a, a world where we will, we, will, um, we, we will celebrate abundance. And in, in this way, I believe it will be a world where more is almost always more. Hi. Uh, I'm Jason. I think it's very interesting that uh, today we have like different kinds of designers. I am an architect myself, but I'm going to talk about design education instead. Um, I actually think that uh, if we treat uh, less is the answer of the design solution, then I tend to agree less is less. But it's actually always when we say less is more, less is the beginning. So if we treat less, it's actually not the answer, but it's actually the question that we provide the end users. Then less is definitely more. Okay? So actually, you know, when we um, design something or when we approach something that with uh, a reduction to the essence of that something and leave that essence open up to the interpretation or imagination for the future users, that is the definition of more at that, time, at that point. But if we design something less and the less stay at the, at, at the end, then, then yes, of course, less is less. Um, so uh, for us, actually, and, and I actually quite disagree that less is more would equal to minimalism. To me, less is more is not minimalism. Uh, less is more is actually a strategy or an attitude to find the essence, like what I said, in something for you to create more indeed. We can find colors, we can find complexity under less is more. That is my uh, definition to, to less is more. Um, here is actually some uh, examples um, that um, like us, like my colleague uh, Julia Mock and myself, when we taught um, year one, design students, you know, very fresh. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, they need to learn a lot of softwares, a lot of technical skills and things. Uh, that is more. But as a start, uh, how do we tell them what our world is about, what space is about? 
And then we started this uh, very simple exercise we call the colors of white. So basically, uh, yes, it's white, but uh, try to find out like uh, we call 10 shades of white uh, of, um, of, their, of their exercise. You know, to correspond to you actually, uh, besides Ms. Van der Rohe, um, you know, another famous master, uh, friend of right, also spoke a little bit something to me similar is in his uh, Perry years that he actually mentioned he really liked the Perry's. One of the reasons is on that hor horizon, even just a little bit of height means a lot. Like for example, that kind of like the far tree. It's not about color. It's about how you find that very difference in our Mother Earth or like in the environment around us. It's actually about details. Um, there are a lot of like different kind of artists that uh, did some you know, exploration about the different shades of white and how do we see things and space and imagination out of those. How we actually doing by a little different grades or a different uh, kind of a minimal touch on uh, different tones of white, then it actually creates that kind of um, uh, mass difference. I actually like this a lot. This is actually, of course, a paper. And then by drawing um, 16 lines, there are like different thickness of the lines um, to us actually define spaces. Um, I'm going to make it quick. And then uh, shade of shadows, I, I think I don't need to mention this, I think we, we all understand shadows. So actually this exercise is we ask all the students just take uh, the ivory white paper in a certain thickness and then and just do it. And then uh, this is a small slogan that we will try to uh, persuade the student to believe is 2 plus 2 equal to 5 is... Um, And then later on, actually, uh, this is not the artist's work, but this is just some year one student's work that basically they play around one ivory white paper and then they point out which 10 shades of white that they found out in the paper. And, and actually, we as tutors, we found it quite amazing. Or by some um, simple cut lines and, and folding. To me, uh, treat less as a starting point that actually to us we found more possibility out of those instead of maybe we set a very complex project brief for them to follow and then they need to fulfill a lot of like guidelines and things. To me, actually, that's it. Great. Thank you, everyone. Great. Uh, we're, we're going to take some questions. I, I think just before we take the question, I would like to make it a little summary because I think what's interesting to me is that uh, we've been talking about two positions, but behind all this, this kind of this unspoken word, which is design. And I think we've been speaking about design through these two slogans. And what's interesting to me is to see the two camps that actually fundamentally we're talking through design through a way of observing. Both of the camps are observing things. Some are references <clears throat> and some are trying to condense, I would say try to edit in. But in a way, this observation is key to the two motions. Without observation, there is no less, there is no more, there is no bore. And what's interesting to me is that you're making a case on the, it's kind of design, making sense of the world, and to me, observing is a form of design. And in, in a way, that's been the key um, to the discussion so far. I'm interested to see the questions, so I'll just go online to check. Sorry, could you just show me where the questions are? Oh, yeah. So the first question is, so in Hong Kong, architecture is heading to less is more or less is a bore direction. Where do you think Hong Kong architecture is heading towards? Maybe I, I give it first to the bore team. 
Um, I think, well, I, I think in, in, in the um, architectural world, in Hong Kong in particular, um, maybe I'm speaking too much like a moderator because I'm taking a very neutral view to less is more. In, in a way, in our life as an architect, sometimes we believe in less is more, sometimes we believe less is a ball. But in general, I think um, in, in, in Hong Kong's situation, it, it is, it is um, going towards the direction of less is a ball. Because the client is always asking for more, as simple as that. And if we try to do less, they would always ask why we don't see anything. Where's your design? That's most often the question we are being asked as an architect. So I believe it's less is a ball. And what would the, the opposition team, the less is more, think of this? Where is Hong Kong architecture going? You know, actually, um, I think we, we, we had a short chat before, right? I think we see the essence is in the quality. Previously, when we talk about less is more, we're talking about, um, you know, you actually like what I said, finding the essence and maintain the high quality in the kind of um, minimal necess necessary materials or design. Mm. But nowadays, I, I would tend to see that Hong Kong is less is the bore. Because nowadays, Hong Kong less is less. Okay? Less is doing less, earn more money, like selling more expensive flat, and then, but we don't see quality. Mm. So that is not the less is more that we talk about. That is less is less. But there's been, there's been, I feel there's been a trend difference, that especially in architecture. I don't other know in other fields of, of design. But the material quality of Hong Kong is changing. Whenever you go to building sites now, the, the, the elevation, the marbles, and the, the material is very, very sophisticated. So something, I think, is changing. Let me ask you another question, and we can ask other participants. What are your views of purely decorative architectural features and ornamentation in the context of contemporary spatial design? I think this is a question about ornament. Maybe I ask the, the less is more team first. Um, sorry, the, the decoration? It's about decoration and ornament. And so what are your views purely on decorative architectural features and ornamentation in the context of contemporary spatial design? Okay, uh, to my design, I always um, I'm against uh, decoration mm. because, uh, as I said, if the space is simple, you can always change the thing. You can put uh, change your decoration, and, and uh, as we said about the, the quality, because if the thing has quality, quality just a simple uh, wooden table. If the wood is in good quality and the craftsmanship is uh, in good quality, like in Japan or Denmark, uh, we actually doesn't need anything extra on the table uh, for you to um, appreciate it because we just touch it, we touch the texture, we feel the smell, um, we see the culture uh, and the history behind the table. That's it. To me, I, I'm against it. Maybe Louise, what would your yeah. reaction be? Um, I do believe um, that architecture should be somewhat a blank canvas for people um, to decorate and personalize themselves. I don't think as um, architects we can really impose um, a style onto people's, especially their homes. Um, and some of those incredible, some of the incredible cityscape we see around Hong Kong, where we see people's um, apartment blocks, and we see every unit has a different, you know, they've, people have modified their unit, uh, each unit is kind of life and character within each one, and the building itself just becomes an aperture for life. Mm. So I don't necessarily think that we should um, apply decoration as a starting point, but I certainly think that we should leave the room for people to decorate and, and modify over time according to their own tastes and personalities. I think that was interesting when you saw the photographs that you showed of Hong Kong, is how rich the habitation is. And so nearly in a way the background architecture becomes a background or the design becomes a background and then the everyday takes over and i think that is also a, um, an element of decoration we have a third question and maybe i ask polly with the rapid growth of technology will this lead to design direction to less is more or less is more so what will happen with technology maybe also in your field of fashion it really depends, like if you, you set the new technology, probably, I don't know, maybe like fabric. I, I still believe it's uh, less is a board because now it's very quick in the fashion world. It's super 
people don't have time to digest. They they have they, they need more and more. So I I still believe it's like in the future still is less is more. And what what do you think happens in the future? Because you showed some amazing pictures of uh, craftsmanship and uh, in the textiles and the making of of, of fabric. Mm. What 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 happens with that craftsmanship? And will that affect because a lot of the detail and ornament in, in, mm. in, 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 is made by hand. Yeah. Is it the same when it was made by machine, or what would be the impact? I, I, I believe the people now, they, 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 they care more about the quality. It's, no matter it's simple or, the, or it's more, um, quality is very important. Mm. Even like uh, they buy a simple T-shirt or very busy, uh, loads of design T-shirt, uh, the quality and the story behind, they care about that instead of just buying some mass production fast fashion. So mm. that, that's my point of view. And the same question to um, you guys. Jimmy, um, so um, from a point of view, uh, not fashion designer, but um, for communication world, maybe uh, technology is uh, uh, supposed to make the communication, no matter the process or the outcome, easier not complicated so of course it's it's it's, it's less is more less in terms of uh, making connecting people uh closer no matter like COVID 19 now uh you you can't visit your friends from from overseas but you can still connect with them just like a click so um for technology communication technologies to make more uh, our world is easier connected uh, for communication well as well, uh, yeah. And in, in terms, especially in technology and architecture, when you are referring to sustainability, one thing I find interesting is that traditional buildings in Hong Kong were all ventilated. You could open the windows. And if you come to the School of Architecture or any school of architecture now, I, I, I feel that there's not even a window that you can open. So we've advanced in terms of technology, but you know, we've got these hermetic boxes. What's your position that technology is doing there in terms of sustainability? Do you think there is a, a way that we can mediate that? Or oh, maybe it's, it's not a question <laughs> for the less is more. We have another question here. Uh, I think it's a difficult one. Here we go. Uh, do the panel members agree? Whenever bore or, or more, most government officials, clients, patrons, or general public have a tendency to be racist to local Hong Kong design firms or local designers. When it comes to large-scale development projects favoring overseas and westerns or western well-established firms, what's your opinion about this? So, you know, less, or, less is bore or less is more, there's a tendency to favor international architects over local firms. What, what, uh, got two minutes, what would your opinion, maybe to the less is more side first? I don't just, hi. I don't understand how this question relates to less is more or less is a bore. It says it is, it is not, but the, the panel, yeah. they, they, they ask for it. But uh, I don't know, we can choose to ignore it if we want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, can, I can see many sides. Yeah. Uh, this happens, this has been happening uh, for some decades, not only in Hong Kong, maybe in a lot of countries, but I can see the other side too. For example, in China, some China clients favor their relatives, which are we who are Chinese. So, you know, this kind of uh, preference or underlying, uh, how, how to say, is, is happening around the world, I would say. Yeah. But yes, it's happening, but mm. and so on. So, I think we've reached uh, nearly the end. Uh, anyone who wants to put the final uh, word? <laughs> Benny? Well, anyone? I, I, I think in... I think actually I want to answer the question just now about um, the large scale development always um, getting the overseas famous architects. Mm. I think it's actually um, getting less is less and less the case. In fact, many of the small practices like Poly, like Jason's new studio, like Keeves, um, we are uprising and, and, and there are a lot of us in, in, in our trade and there are a lot of larger developers and developments that are willing to risk and, and hire smaller studios because of their passion and, the, mm. and, 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 and their insights and design and the delicacy of the work that they do. So I think in the future, uh, um, actually, 
we are, well, as we, there, are, there are more of us than the more famous foreign architects, right? So I think as a mass, we are gaining success in, in this field. And I think in the future, um, less is definitely a bore. Um, I think, um, as I said, some of us would feel differently at different occasions of life. Um, so sometimes we, we might agree to use monochrome and, 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 and black and white, but other times we don't. Yeah. So, thank you very much. I think this brings us to an end of, to our discussion. I think it's very interesting to, you know, it's a very polarized discussion, but actually we've been talking, I think, very in a sophisticated manner about how people design and different ways of designing. And I think differences are always appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, as our moderator. I would say that this is a very interesting debate, and I don't know which side should I take now. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much to our proposition team, uh, our, uh, and also the opposition team. Thank you very much, and also thank you, Detour, as well, to invite RIBA to be part of it.